Last week, we jumped in. Uh, we jumped in last week talking about a common problem that we all share. Last week, we talked about a, a problem that, 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 <laughs> that dogs both you and it dogs uh, <laughs> me as well. Uh, and we talked about not only the problem, but we also talked about the solution that we all need. And if you remember, last week, the problem that we talked about was a problem of sin. Oh, I'm sorry. Never mind. You guys aren't the sinning church. The East, the other, the other camp, they're the ones that have the sin, not you guys. Anyway, um, um, uh, a problem that some of us then share is a problem of sin. In, in other words, it's a problem of us consistently missing the mark that's been established by God. That's sin. Sin is when our desire to choose our satisfaction over God's satisfaction. That's when sin is about. In other words, when we want our way and not God's way, it results in sin. So we have this problem that we're born with. We have this problem that's in our nature. We have this problem that is a part of us. Oh, what miserable people are we? Who is going to save us from this body of death? The only solution to sin, the only solution is Jesus Christ. Amen. We learn that Jesus is the only solution. He's the only Messiah. He's the only Savior that can save us from this. So today, as we move into the second week, as we move into the second uh, 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 lesson or, or journey through the Purple Book, uh, we're going to be looking today at lordship and obedience to Christ. So I want to give you this title for us to kind of navigate around today. And that title is simply this, Saved But Not Surrendered. Saved But Not Surrendered. Will you say that with me this morning? Saved But Not Surrendered. One more time. Saved But Not Surrendered. Saved But Not Surrendered. So, uh, one of the things that I used to love, I mean, absolutely love as a kid growing up, and if you look on the stage, you, you see all of these, these different games. You see Connect Four, you see Jenga, you see all of these balls, these hula hoops, and, and all of that jump rope. I'm not even going to try that. I'm going to leave that right there. But one of the things that I absolutely love growing up, and I still do to this very day, is... I just love board games. Really? Board games. I'm the board game king. I love, if you come over to my house, I promise you, you will not leave until we play a board game. Okay? <laughs> I'm letting you know right now. So I love all the new games. I mean, I, I love the Jenga. I love Taboo. I love Scatter. I, I love Apples. Uh, I, love all, I love all those new ones. But I like the old ones, too. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Y'all see some of y'all. Y'all got gray. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Anybody uh, play Candyland? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Clue. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Battleship. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Anybody play Sorry? Come on, y'all. Shoots and ladders. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Shoots, and <laughs> Shoots and ladders. Come on. Yes. Okay. So here y'all go. Right? Y'all throw. Monopoly. Monopoly. Can I just tell y'all something? Uh, I played Monopoly, but I didn't necessarily like Monopoly. See, now, I don't, I don't remember playing it a lot, but there are some things about playing Monopoly that I do remember. 
Some of the things I remember about playing Monopoly, for example, is the first thing I remember is this. You always want to be the car, not the iron, not the shoe, not the symbol, you know, whatever. You don't, you don't want any of that, right? You don't want that. The next thing I remember about Monopoly is that you always wanted to buy all of the railroads, the utilities, and the two blue ones, right, the Park Place and Broadway, right? Right there at the end. You always wanted to get those two, right? And you were straight. But here's the thing. The thing I remember most about Monopoly was this, is that the, 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 the card that everybody wanted, Regardless of where you were in the game, regardless of how much stuff you own, no matter how many of the houses and hotels you had set up, the card that everybody wanted, most of all, was this. Right? I mean, Monopoly players, am I lying? Is, am I right? Okay. Yeah, everybody wanted this card may be kept until needed or sold, get out of jail free yes. card. Yeah. Yep. You see, when you possess this card, when you had that card, it was insurance <laughs> that if you played the game <laughs> and if you rolled the dice and you landed in the wrong spot, that you didn't have to be penalized. When you had this card, you escaped the penalty and you were able to continue with the game. I'm preaching. I'm preaching. Y'all see where I'm going, right? See, watch this. When it comes to living the life that Jesus Christ died for us to live. Many of us, we have a monopoly mindset. We have a monopoly mindset. Well, what do you mean, Pastor? I mean that we all want to play the game of life. We all want to roll the dice. And we all hope that we don't land in the wrong spot in life. And if we do, we definitely don't want to be penalized. <laughs> we don't want to be penalized. We want to redeem a get out of jail, or in this case, get out of hell. Card. And once we got that get out of hell card, we, we want to continue to roll the dice. We want to continue to play the game and risk landing in the wrong spot. Can you imagine on that day that you go before the great, the great lamb, the, the, the great... Jesus himself, the, the great conqueror, to go before him on that day of judgment. <laughs> Talking about, uh, hey, Jesus, uh, got this. <laughs> Get out of hell card. <laughs> Can I have the non-smoking section, please? No. Right. See, whether we choose to admit it or not, if we're honest, there are more of us who operate with a monopoly mentality. In other words, we only approach Jesus as savior or get out of hell free and not as Lord. Oh, 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 wow, 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 you said it. See, the question that we have to ask ourselves and we really have to answer is this. Is Jesus our savior 
but not our Lord? Wow. See, the purple book, it, 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 it states, it simply defines that Lord means master, right? Lord means master. So when we go with that definition of Lord, when we go with that definition of master and we apply, and we apply it to our lives, guess what? It begins to interfere with what we want. Right? Yeah. He may want something different from me. So it begins to interfere with what we want. And, and things begin to change. In the Purple Book, in Lesson 2, it refers to Matthew chapter 7, uh, verses 13 through 14. And, and we're not going to go there now, but, but what that scripture talks about, or what that scripture quotes, as I'm sure you guys know this scripture, it says that the, that the road to hell... <laughs> is wide. Y'all know that scripture? Yeah. It's, uh, it, it, it's wide. The road to hell is wide. And it's easy to find. But the road that leads to the kingdom, narrow. it's a narrow, narrow gate. Right. It's narrow. It's, it, it's hard. It's, it, it's a much harder path. And, and it's very difficult. And very few find it. And in that application, I think, I, I think is applicable and it transfers to this because here's the situation. Everybody, everybody wants Jesus as Savior. That's why we all, Jesus, save us. But the Lord part, ooh, that becomes narrow. I don't want to change Jesus. Oh, oh. That becomes narrow. Why? Not, 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 not nearly as many people want him as Lord because it's hard. It's difficult. So we hear this, and honestly, even me, I'm talking to myself, it, it, it makes me uncomfortable. I'm up here preaching. I'm like, ouch. I'm yeah. like hitting myself. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and so we get this uncomfortable. And our first inclination when we hear this is, yes, of course. Of course he's our Lord. But if Jesus is really our Lord and not just our Savior, there should be some signs that show in our lives. Yeah. Amen? Amen? There should be some signs that show he is Lord and not just Savior. Yeah. So I'm going to give you three signs this morning that will show you or anyone around you if Jesus is truly Lord and not just Savior. Sure. Can we do that this morning? Yeah. yeah. Sure? Yeah. All right, turn to the person next to you. Tell them to wake up. Here we go. Give you a couple of signs this morning, again, to know that Jesus is Lord and not just Savior. The first sign that you can look for to, again, understand that Jesus is Lord and not just Savior is this. Obedience is a sign that Jesus is Lord. Yeah, yeah. Anybody other than Sabrina agree with that? Yes. Yes. Yep. Obedience is a sign that Jesus is Lord. What does the Bible say? Well, let's go. Let's look. In Luke chapter 6, verses 46 and 49, then we'll go to Matthew chapter 7. It says this. This is Jesus himself talking. He says, why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord? when you don't do what I say. I will show you what it's like when someone comes to me, listens to my teaching, and then follows it. It is like a person who is building a house, who digs deep, and lays the foundation on solid rock. When, can I stop right there? Sure. 
I, I, I thought it did say if. No. 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 If the floodwaters no. rise and break against. When. Oh, when. when. So, so it's coming. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It ain't a matter of. <laughs> it is a matter. Of, it is coming. Right. When the floodwaters rise and break against that house, it stands firm because it's well built. It stands firm because of obedience. But anyone who hears and does not obey is like a person who builds a house on the ground without a foundation, and when the floods sweep against that house again, when? It will collapse into a heap of ruins. Hmm. Okay. Let's go to Matthew. So, so we're saying, you say, Lord, Lord, but you don't do what he said. Now watch this one. In Matthew chapter 7, uh, verse 21, it says this. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Huh. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, Many, not just a little, y'all, but many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name. We cast out demons in your name. We pastor churches in your name. We did outreaches in your name. We served in the church and we did all of this. They cast out demons. They even performed miracles. The stuff they were doing was working. It was working. But watch this. You cry, Lord, Lord, and Jesus. The great lamb sitting on the throne will look at you. He says, and I am going to reply, who are you? I, I don't know you. You did what? You, you, you pastored a church? You, 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 you taught Bible study? You, you, you. oh. I don't recognize you. We have never met. Because if we did, I'd remember you. I don't recognize you. I have no knowledge of you whatsoever. Can somebody say ouch? Yes. Can I say it like this? It's one thing to know Jesus. But it's a whole other thing to be known by Jesus. Amen? Amen. Can I say that one more time? Yes. I said it's one thing to know Jesus. But it's a whole other thing to be known by him. Amen. So, again, the, the first sign of lordship is obedience. The, the second sign of lordship is Surrender. Surrender is a sign that Jesus is Lord. Now, let's go to the book. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. So here's Jesus talking again. Jesus says this to his disciples. If any of you wants to be my follower, you must surrender your own way. Take up your cross and follow me. For if you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you surrender your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world but lose your soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? See, we hear this word surrender. And if I'm honest with you, you know, and especially in, in the Christian world, you know, these words surrender, similar to the word uh, submission. 
We hear submission. Oh, I ain't going to submit to nobody. Huh? Right? Submission and sir, these have, somehow they've developed like this connotation. They're, they're dirty words. Like, Ew. No, but see, to, to, to people like that think like that, they believe somehow that surrender or they believe somehow that, that submission implies weakness. But it's actually words of power and strength, especially when we're referring to God. Amen? Surrender to God takes strength. Submission to God takes strength. My, 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 my friend, Pastor Sean uh, uh, Moore, he says this. He defines surrender like this. He says surrender is to yield or give away your influence, your thoughts, your emotions, your passion, and your perspective to the power of another. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? That is so good. To the power of another. And we're not just talking about yielding it to any power. No, we're talking about only yielding it to the power and the lordship of Jesus. Again, surrender shows submission to the strongest. Amen? So a sign of lordship is obedience. Say obedience. Another sign of lordship is surrender. Say surrender. The last one I'm going to share with you today is this. The last sign I'm going to, and there are others, but these are just the ones I'm sharing with you today, is this. Sanctification is a sign that Jesus is Lord. Sanctification. I'll talk to you if you don't know what that is. I'll give you the definition in a minute. But sanctification, let's just go to the word. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, verses uh, 14, 15, I think 17 in there as well. It says this. It says, don't team up with those that are unbelievers. Don't be unequally yoked. How can righteous be a partner with wickedness? How can light live with darkness? What harmony can there be between Christ and the devil? Can a believer be a partner with an unbeliever? Therefore, come out from among unbelievers and separate yourselves. Say separate, separate yourselves from them, says the Lord. Don't touch their filthy things and I will welcome you. So when it comes to sanctification, and we had a phenomenal discussion about this in our Wednesday night um, purple book group. Sanctification is this. It is the dedication Consecration, or watch this, or setting or being set apart for a specific and holy use. Yes, yes. When you are sanctified, you are set apart for a holy and a specific use. So, 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 so when you're sanctified, you can't, well, I'm, I'm going to go hang out with, hmm, is that a holy use that God has separated you for? Mm -mm. No. Uh -uh. See, this is what we, we really pushed into the other night, and I thought it was such a cool discussion. Salvation is the gift. Amen? Yes. Salvation, salvation is a gift. No matter what you do, you cannot earn salvation. That's right. That's right. It is a gift freely given to you by Christ, by God. By the, it, it is a gift freely given to you. You cannot work or earn your salvation. That's right. That's right. But once you're saved, the work that you put in is sanctification. Okay. You work at sanctification. You work at being and becoming more 
and more like Christ. Sanctification is a process of becoming more and more and more like Christ. Amen? Amen. You see, here's the, here's the issue, and it's true in our society today. Everybody, say everybody. Everybody, everybody wants the prize, but no one wants to go through the process. Do you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said everybody wants the prize, but nobody wants to go through the process. Just give it to me. I want, uh, no, there's a process. There's a process. Salvation is instant, yes. But sanctification, you can get saved today. But sanctification, that's an everyday thing. That's an everyday thing. It's a journey that starts again at the moment we say yes to Jesus and it continues all the way up until we're on the other side. The sanctification process is described in Ephesians 4 like this. It says, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature created to be like God truly righteous and holy. In other words, we have to surrender. Sanctification always involves surrender. Sanctification, y'all, is a daily choice. Every day. I got saved in 1982. Okay, well, you should have been sanctified since then. Right, right. Or in the process of being sanctified. Okay? Because here's the thing. There's some stuff that if I'm being sanctified in the fruit, well, there's some stuff that's just not going to appeal to me anymore. Because in the process, watch this. The purpose of the process is for me to be perfected. Do you hear me? Listen, I didn't say for me to be perfect. I said for me to be perfected. In other words, the, every day I should be a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more like him. Every day. Every, uh, let, let me just take off that, that, that rough corner right there. Ish. Every day. Every day. He is Lord. He is Lord. So I'm just going to close with this. We get ready to. I just want to remind you again. God loves us. Jesus loves us so much. He did not go through the hell that he went through just for you to avoid hell. That's part of it. Yes. But his love is so much more than just giving you a get out of hell ticket. His love is anchored in relationship. His love is anchored, anchored in that relationship that comes through obedience. You love him, you'll do what he says. You love him, it's, you, you'd be happy to surrender to him. You love him, why wouldn't you? want to be sanctified and be more like him. Why wouldn't you? If you love him. But if all you care about is getting out of hell. Mm. See, what I'm hoping is this, is that when that time comes and we're standing there, the great judgment the son is on the throne. And we go before him at that time. So when the time comes out for us to cry, Lord, Lord, we don't want to hear Jesus say, who are you? 
We want to hear Jesus say, well done, good and faithful servant. Come on in. Got a place at the table, the banquet right here for you. Come on in. I just want to close with this. You'll find this in, in the book. You'll find this in the second section. So I'll leave with this. It says this. It says, to trust and obey Christ doesn't mean salvation depends on us being perfect. Rather, following Jesus as Lord is attitude of complete surrender and obedience to Christ. In other words, hmm, there's so much more he wants for us. Forget the monopoly mindset. It's, it's not about getting out of jail. It's about so much more. I'm going to ask right now that you would take just a moment, that you would bow your heads just for a second. And I just believe that this morning, this message, this, this word was deposited in, uh, in my, uh, was deposited in my spirit, in my heart, not only for, 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 for me, but I believe there's somebody here that God is speaking to through this message. I believe there's somebody here who your whole relationship, your whole encounter with Christ is based really on fear. It's not that love drove you to surrender, or, or not that love drove you, it's, it's that the fear of hell propelled you that way. It wasn't like, oh, I love Jesus. No, you're just trying to escape hell. And Jesus is saying, let, let, let's fix this thing. Let's fix this thing. It's not about that. That's just, a, that's just a byproduct. That's a benefit. But there is so much more that my love and my relationship will bring to you. So maybe today, that's you. Maybe today, you've never gotten to the relationship part because it's just been, you've just been satisfied to know you're not going to hell. but he wants so much more for you. So if this message in any part was for you today, here in just a second, we're going to pray a prayer and we're just going to pray a prayer of, 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 of rededication, of, 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 of sanctification, of obedience, of surrender, of really, truly submitting who we are, how we think, what we are, completely to the Lordship of Jesus. If that's you today, whether you're online or whether you're here in the building, I just want you to take just a moment. If that's you, on the count of three, will you just raise your hand so we can pray that prayer together? One, two, three. Let me see your hands. God bless you. 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 All right, God bless you. Thank you. I see your hands. Let's pray this prayer together. <laughs> Dear Lord, thank you for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross, getting up. But Lord, I know it was for so much more. Lord, I accept you as my Savior and also as my Lord. Lord, help me to be more obedient to you, your word, and your will. Help me, Lord, surrender to your word, to your will, and to you. And Lord, help me be sanctified transformed, shaped, molded on a daily basis, moment to moment, 
choice by choice, conversation by conversation, relationship by relationship. Help me to be more like you. Thank you, Lord. You're faithful. And I know you'll respond to this prayer. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Let's give the Lord a hand this morning.